Have you ever lost $10,000? Now I'm not talking about a, a bet gone bad or misplacing the money in your, your mattress or your sofa at home. I'm talking about legitimately losing $10,000 on a bad investment. In this video, what I'm going to tell you is that a condo we did went bad. The condo right here, that condo we lost $10,000 on just because it wasn't a good purchase. And if you want to hear the learning lessons, everything we learned along the way, why we lost money, stay tuned to the end of this video and I will break down the entire process for you. But if you could, in the meantime, hit the like and subscribe button down below, I would greatly appreciate it. But before we get into it, my name's Carter. I'm a 25 year old real estate entrepreneur, real estate investor. And over the last three years, we've flipped, we've wholesaled, we've bought 80 plus properties and on the residential real estate agent side of things i've done over 10 or multiple tens of millions of dollars worth of sales volume um, to give you a little bit of experience but let's talk about this condo in omro wisconsin if none of you are aware of it i will put the address on the screen right here so let's talk about the property just a little bit to give you an idea on, on where we're coming from. It was a one bedroom, one bath condo that we had cold called a guy on. Now you might be thinking, where? how did you get the information? Um, how did you find them? Condo units might be a little bit more difficult, but we had pulled the list. It was a high equity list. We called this guy. I can't even remember his name, but I, we asked him if he was interested in taking an offer on this place. And he actually, he had moved further north, about two hours north, and this was just used on the weekends when he would come back into town or when he had business travel in the area. So he bought like a $60,000 condo, one bed, one bath. It was very cheap. It might have even been cheaper than renting out a hotel on a, a monthly basis. Can I ask you a question? Do you know if the hotel's pager friendly? What do you mean? I'm not getting a sig on my beeper. So we had cold called this guy, we got him on the phone and he was interested in selling it because he had no use for it anymore. So after I went on the appointment, we called him up, we made him an offer and this is where the details get funky. From the beginning, there was multiple things that I personally missed when we were evaluating the deal. First thing is first, one bedroom, one bath condos do not sell in our area very quick. The, the average days on market at this point in time, and again, it's not like the market is today when it's extremely hot, everything's selling just at a snap of a finger. Things took time. So a one bed, one bath condo took more time than I expected to sell. Also, when I was doing the due diligence, I was like, okay, it's a, I know it's a small place. So I typed in and I found Zillow and it said the square footage was 800 and some square feet, like 870. So I was like, well, this isn't too bad for a one bedroom, one bath. And then I was doing more research. And after we purchased it, when we were going to put it back on the market to list it, I pulled up the actual assessment records, which is a quick tip for you guys. Look at the assessment records from your county site. And it showed that the condo was a one bed, one bath condo, 650 square feet. So it was 200 square feet less than I originally had anticipated which means a lowered after repair value. And after repair value is just what the property is worth once it's all fixed up and repaired. In this unit, the nice part is it didn't need much. We had to do carpet and paint. We were into the property for $3,500 because it was so small and we were able to put it back on the market right away. But when I was doing my initial evaluation where the second pitfall came in is, I thought it was gonna be worth $95,000 when we sold it. Can you guys guess? I'll give you a, a few seconds to guess what we sold it for. Now, I hope you commented down below with your guesses because what we sold it for, I'll flash it on the screen really quick, is... Yeah, that is right. We sold it for $30,000 less than originally anticipated. So of course our numbers were going to be off from the start and this is completely my fault. I ran the numbers incorrect, which ended up losing us money at the end of the day. And then going along with that pitfall number three, 
which again, this is a learning lesson for you guys who are watching this video right now. I hope you take this into consideration. Jot it down on a piece of paper. Do not buy a deal just to buy a deal, whether it's a rental property, a flip property, a wholesale property. Do not do a deal just to do a deal. And what I mean by this is there's bad deals out there. Trust me, we've lost money on three deals to date um, and it's been probably about 30000 or $35,000 total. So nothing significant or nothing crazy that would sink our business altogether, but it's still losing money. It's not fun to do. Pitfall number three was we bought the deal just to buy the deal because we didn't have any work coming up. So I was like, okay, we're gonna get in, we're gonna paint it, carpet it, make a quick ten to $20,000, get in and out in a matter of two months. That's a, a fantastic purchase opportunity. But at the end of the day, I was overlooking or I missed multiple things that would have probably led us to passing on it or offering a lower price. And it is what it is, it's a, a water under the bridge at this point. But again, a learning lesson that I want you to take into consideration so it doesn't happen to you in the future. It's a lesson learned. I have found it valuable that you cannot dwell on things like that all too often, otherwise they keep coming up. And we've made it our duty to be very strict on our due diligence process. We look at flood plane records, we look at insurance quotes, we look at assessment data when it comes to square footage. We look at multiple different factors. We run multiple different sets of comparable properties, especially on flips and rentals, so we just don't get ourselves in a bad deal. And especially there are so many circumstances nowadays that can affect that after repair value of the property that you should personally be doing your due diligence, especially if you're bringing in outside capital to do the deal, that you need to make sure that your investor is protected or that your hard earned money is protected in the deal. So I hope you guys found this information valuable. If you could please smash the like and subscribe button down below, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will be bringing you more videos every single week, so stay tuned. And I wish you guys the ultimate success and I will talk to you soon.